live. Are we live? Yep. Oh, cool. Never done this before. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. We tried. I tried to go live when our first lamb was born, but the it was way back in the barn. Yeah, and you could get There was get no reception, reception and it, yeah. the lighting was bad. It was terrible. All that stuff. Okay, so why are we here? We are here because we received the five reasons why you homestead challenge from Ethan and Sarah at 180 degrees from average. Yep. Who actually only live like... 20 minutes from 20 us. minutes from us? Yeah. Didn't know that. In fact, I don't even remember why or how we came to know them. I think it was... Comment of... section in Justin Rhodes videos, maybe. Yeah. So I think he emailed me and and yeah, now with us. We've hung out a few times. Yeah. And uh, they were over here a week or two ago when you had your boutique. Yep. Selling farm products and other things, and they made a video, and uh, his tire had a huge I forget what it was like a nail or something in it, and yep. it was just hissing out there as they were ready to go. <laughs> so I helped him do that. Fix that up in our shop, and then he ended up um, putting us in one of his videos that he was doing to do the same challenge yep. that she got from Wholesome Roots, who I just found out she subscribed to our channel yesterday. So hi, Rose. Cool. Thank you for <laughs> setting this challenge off and letting us be part of it, and thanks you for joining the channel. All right, so we're doing this live because we don't really have time to edit yeah. <laughs> videos no. right now with the uh, holidays coming up and doing it live hopefully means that it will be quick and make things interesting we will try. for everyone. We, yeah. We're going to try. All right. So we have notes. We're prepared. Um, okay. So challenge. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining us. That's in the notes. Um, and why we're doing this live. Okay. So reason number one why we're homesteading is, oh, we have two people watching. Yay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I need to figure out how to see, you know, who oh, they are. Oh dear. Here. Okay. <laughs> you, you talk about it first. Oh, it's them. It's Ethan yes. and Sarah. Oh, we just hi guys. finished talking about you. We did. And the reason that we're doing this is because of you. And hello. And you guys are All great. your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault we're embarrassing ourselves on live YouTube. So. Yeah. Okay. Totally. So the first reason that we uh, are homesteading is because of our health. Yes. And uh, I think it started, it started in November of 2012, and uh, I got Hashimoto's, which is not a common thing for men to get, and uh, I started really looking into diet first, because I started reading, and there was a lot that was related to diet that had to do with autoimmune conditions, and that kind of became a gateway to um, lots of various decisions that yeah. ended us ended up with us buying a farm so yeah. karen yep. also is a type 1 diabetic and so i have been for 20 years so it now. hasn't always been something that has drawn me to um more natural solutions but in the last recent years the more we learn the more i realize that i can really benefit my health by um through this sustainable kind of homesteading lifestyle. So, um, yeah, growing our own food and raising our own meat and everything like that, we've um, found a lot of health benefits. So that's reason number one. Yep, health. So, um, <clears throat> I, like most people, we started with backyard chickens and... Uh, and gardening. And gardening. Gardening probably came first, actually. Garden, gardening was definitely first. We bought a one-acre yeah. property and there was huge gardens there when we started. Um, but uh, they weren't very taken very good care of, I don't think, at least from a no. soil health perspective. It's just kind of the regular tomatoes and peppers and yeah, other things yeah. you can grow I mean, easily. Yeah, I think they were doing what they knew how to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, another Randy. Hi, Randy. Um, so that's our first first reason is, is, is our health. Yeah. Um, we wanted to grow food that was focused on nutrient density as a goal instead of on yield or on looking pretty or or shelf life or anything like that yeah. uh, so that's a big reason why um, uh, whatever everything we do on our farm and when we were living previously in town uh, was really focused on nutrient density I've done a lot of research yeah on that um, 
We also have four kids, and um, as they've grown, we've seen lots of different health things with them that we're finding that we can benefit their health and teach them um, better how to care for themselves better and how to make good choices and things like that through this lifestyle. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so second reason why we homestead is education. Yeah. Um, we started homeschooling our kids when the oldest was in third grade. Yep. And uh, they went to a public charter school before that. Uh, and then Karen, I think, just had a bunch of friends who peer pressured her into homeschooling. <laughs> And uh, after Seemed never like really the right like, thing to do, after, I mean, <laughs> after never really feeling like you could do that, like we kind of felt empowered seeing other people do it. Yeah, that's really more the truth of it. Yeah. It wasn't peer pressure. It was more that uh, it wasn't something I was exposed to before, and so seeing people that I knew that were doing it and finding that there were so many resources, um, where I felt like. I could be equipped to provide my children with an education that they um, would benefit from as well as give them the tools to learn how to be a really active part of their education. And that is something that um, really excites me to, to kind of let them take some responsibility in that. Um, I mean, obviously, as they're, when they're little, that's, it's a whole other thing than compared to as they get older, but... Yeah. yeah. So along with that on education, we felt like moving to a, a farm or something was, hey, two family homestead. Hello. Um, we kind of felt like that was a place where we could give our kids a lot more education that they weren't going to get anywhere else. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that uh, involves just things like how to, you know, how to grow food and uh, woodworking and how yeah, to build stuff. Build a bunny scooter, chicken tractor. Yeah, and you know, giving them tools and letting them go play with them. Not not, not like saws, but you know, <laughs> well, they, they play a little bit with saws. <laughs> <laughs> not not battery powered or gas powered saws. Anyway, <laughs> soon. Like I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, yeah. you know, just the ability to go build stuff and go yeah. and learn things on their own. And have that kind of free play. We we have fourteen acres here, well, and, and we give them to... the opportunity to go yeah. and like make a stupid mistake that doesn't involve breaking the neighbor's window. They can go it's do true. something, and you know maybe they break a tree or or, or a fence yeah, or something. It'll it's not be that all big right. of a deal. Yeah, they can break the neighbors. Well, we can so... bring. It's it's given us opportunities to bring them alongside us in in things as we're learning too, and so. Um, there's just more opportunities for that we found. Yeah. So, um, we also wanted to give them opportunities and this was a big one for moving to our current property was to let them be entrepreneurs. Yeah. We, uh, I have a regular job and Karen, uh, is starting, we'll talk later, I guess, about our own business stuff that we're doing. Um, but we just kind of saw the the standard go to school, go to college, get your debt, get your get, get your, your debt, <laughs> get your debt, get your job, it's get like your, something to check off the list. Get your got my thirty grand in debt, <laughs> good to go. Get, you know, get your get your mortgage, get your four hundred one k, and and then be done. That we kind of wanted to let them have more opportunity. So we grew up in a wealthy suburb. We had all the opportunities that sure. we, that we could get, but you know, we didn't really. We weren't really necessarily presented with options besides the regular college route. Yeah. And we wanted to give them the ability to own their own business and to pursue their own interests and to learn from a young age that their time and their talents were worth money. And yeah. That they should expect to be paid for them. So since we've moved, um, one of the things we've done on the farm is to try and give one kid give each kid their own enterprise. So our daughter Maddie runs an egg business. Yep. Uh, so if you're ever in the area, we have eggs for sale all the time. She's also writing books. Uh, and also we, uh, she just got recognized by the school district again yeah. for writing books. It's kind of a proud parent moment. So we're going to break yeah. for a little while. <laughs> so she's got three eBooks that she's got up for sale for all you folks who have you know, tween age readers. Um, yeah. They're really good. I edited them all and I was really actually super impressed and surprised because I, I wasn't sure. But 
uh, Gracie breeds bunnies and sells them. Yeah. She makes a killing at that. Bunny I people. tell you what, that's where the money is. <laughs> if you're wondering where the money is at in homesteading, pet bunnies. Pet bunnies. <laughs> Everybody loves the bun buns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so Jack has... He's, he's just been doing more farm chores. Like, yeah. he's got those opportunities. But this year, we're going to start growing pumpkins. He wants yeah. to grow pumpkins and sell them on the roadside. And in our area, we can have we can have a roadside vegetable stand, and that's allowed. So yep. I'm pretty excited about when I heard about that. Uh, and Elsa's a little young, but I don't know what she's going to do. She still yeah, has her farm chores, Something will come. Too. Yeah, she's little. But, you know, if I had any guess, Jack will probably start a drone racing course of something oh, in the front us. pasture. <laughs> Um, none of them really do anything with the sheep. We do the Not sheep, yet. the two of us, and yeah. we do the broilers and the turkeys, but they help with all of that. Yeah. Um, so we want to give them something that they can do. And, uh, you know, just like uh, I see people asking all the time uh, how the roads get their children to do work, and the answer is he pays it very, very well. <laughs> yeah. um, and so we kind of have a similar setup. Maddie, for instance... We sell our eggs for five dollars a dozen she gets a cut of that so yeah. every dozen that she sells um you know the business pays for the feed and and for odds and ends and then she gets paid for her labor uh, and that's just not something that i think either of us had when we were kids no we're we don't do allowances or anything like that we we uh expect them to do uh, their work for their luxury accommodations at <laughs> home and their you know <laughs> gourmet chef and and everything but uh, if they want to make money, they have to work. Yeah. And uh, we want that work ethic and we want that entrepreneurial spirit for them to go out in the world and, and say, I can come up with an idea, I can market it, I can sell it, and I can do it. Yeah. Well, and, and just to teach them that there's value in working hard, um, that we value that, that uh, the rest of the world values that, that, you know, if you put... Um, your effort in if you create a good product of whatever sort that it is um, that kids that they can learn that starting out and see that value and then um, as they grow and you know learn about what their passions are and the things that really interest them uh, they can take that work ethic into anything they do in life I don't know what's happening. She said we should start a minivan upholstery business. <laughs> you know, okay. Well, that the back of that van turned out much better than it was before. I have to tell you, oh, like, yeah, we should we should show them a video of that because it's got this nice weather tech. It's a little Jerry liner and everything, <laughs> and I really don't like the precedent that it's setting because now it's like totally like livestock proof and it's, it's like prepared no more livestock in the minivan that was a one-time deal <laughs> no more we We're have like set up for it now <laughs> we have something that can haul a trailer <laughs> we have a trailer that's how the other sheep came home in the first place we do not need a, a minivan is not our only option is what i'm trying to say but it's a option <laughs> but it sure was hilarious <laughs> and you know we made a video of when we brought willa home our life's like oh, dog. Oh, that was worse than the sheep. And I it mean, smelled really bad. It and, didn't ruin the car, but it was bad. Yeah, and she was in a kennel. We were at least prepared for that. But the good. sheep, it was kind of like every half hour or an hour. I mean, it was five and a half hours home that the sheep was in the car. I mean, sometimes you have to try things. And so, every, <laughs> every, really <laughs> every hour or so, it was like, oh, what is that? And Maddie's like, the sheep peed again. And it was like, oh. It was real. It was. Just, it was all the windows down for it was a little real bit. bad, guys. Bring it back up. So, <laughs> okay. All right, so... We're digressing. Uh, health, first reason. Uh, yes. Education. Education. Second reason. Third reason is community. Um, and education is a piece of that, too. I mean, these all kind of, like, tie into each other because, you know, what started as education for ourselves and education for our kids has grown into something where... Um, we are desiring and building a community and we love that that gives us the opportunity to share, um, and educate within that community and to be educated within that community, to have other people share with us what they've learned and to be able to all kind of grow together and benefit from that. Yeah. So you kind of had this epiphany. You went to, uh, to like a 
was it like a homeschooling uh, where or no it was a place where well (laughs) it was you were gonna like talk about young living stuff or something right but you also had farm products and then there was another young living person yep so karen is a young living uh rep or distributor yeah and and there was a person that had her display and you also had your display but then you had all of your stuff that was related to our farm. Yeah. And like everybody came by and wanted to talk about the farm. Yeah. And it was super cool because I got there and I was a little like, um, I mean, the Young Living and the oils and everything, it's all just a piece of what we're doing. You know, it's not this, it's not, that's not the whole picture. Right. So, but I had this opportunity to go and participate in this, um, like mom's event where there were other moms coming in and we were like providing uh, products and stuff like that to like for the moms to be able to pamper themselves was kind of the idea. Right. So, and I didn't know that there were going to, that there was going to be another young living distributor there. So when I got there and I had kind of my little setup and was feeling good about it or whatever. um, And, and this other gal, like she was like, had all the Young Living stuff and I got there and I was kind of like, oh no. But I also had some of the farm stuff with me and just um, information about that we were raising pastured poultry and eggs and everything. And all of these other moms, um, a lot of whom homeschool and things like that, came and um, I mean, they, they looked at the Young Living stuff and we talked a little bit about that and had some really good conversations. But was, what was super cool was that they were super excited about what we were doing on our farm and were like, hey, like, tell, you know, is there, can we come out? Can we come to your farm and see what you're doing? And um, they were just really excited about it. And for me, that was so exciting because it, it um, it's such a huge part of, of everything that we're doing that I couldn't just go and like talk about oils, even though I like them and they're great and they've done a lot of beneficial things for us. It was like, if I were to go and not talk about how we're growing our food and different things like that, um, I just wouldn't be really being true to who, who I am and what I know and what I want to share with people. And so it, um, it really, really encouraged me to see that there was such a strong desire out there for other people who weren't necessarily um, going to go and like get their own farm, but they were really excited about what we were doing and wanted to know how they could be part of it. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, the epiphany there was that we could build a community through our farm. Yeah. Like there are customers, but we have we have kind of these internet mentors who don't really know that they're mentoring us. And that's like yonder way farm in Texas. Justin Rhodes was there yeah, and did a big thing on them. And Karen has met Lindsay and and they've, uh, uh, we have a young living connection. Yeah. Yeah. Karen's met her before. Which is super cool. And you know, we, we really like are trying to model our farm after them and the community that they have. So our farm is always open. We will give you a tour anytime you want to show up. Just call or email first. And and uh, I think part of the most rewarding part of farming, you know, there's a lot of, like, the bucolic things of it, like pastoral, and, you know, it's really fun and nice and everything to see animals on a pasture. But I think yeah. the most fun is people when they come to pick up their chickens. I love having people here. <laughs> <laughs> they come and they pick up their food, and we just talk forever. Yeah. And that's I think that's been the best part. Um, and then to say for like the homesteading community, um, it's really cool. And I think I've seen a lot of this through 180 from average from your channel. And there's a, there's, it seems like everywhere in the U S and maybe, I don't know, internationally, there's homesteaders, they, they're independent people, but they do get together and, and really feel a sense of community. And we've started to experience that too, uh, through YouTube, um, you know, a lot of you guys who are here are here because you saw us on Justin Rhodes or one yeah. from Average. And so it's kind of like instant community because uh, all of us are sort of going towards a real similar goals. All right, so we got to move on. That's yep. three. So health, education, community. Um, uh, we kind of sputtered out a little bit on more than just those three. 
Ethan and Sarah, you guys only did three, so we've at least <laughs> met the minimum bar. <laughs> we... <laughs> Thanks um, for doing that for us, guys. Yeah. So no, I think the couple of last couple of ideas they have is that we just wanted a place for our kids to be free to roam. Yep. And we wanted that... Um, Oh, so 180 from average, you guys agree too. Which yeah. It is really Community. surprising. Like, people are so nice in the comments and everything. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is so great. Yeah. Um, and uh, we wanted, one of the reasons we brought our kids home from school was because we kind of saw that they were just burned out. And they were like in third grade. Yeah. And they, uh, they didn't have time for recess. They had 10 minutes or 15 minutes for lunch. And then they came home and they did homework all night. And I was like... We're thinking back to our days where we watched cartoons every day after school and we played all I night didn't. after dinner. I mean, we were running wild through the neighborhood. Like yeah. we didn't, I mean, we didn't live on a, on a farm or anything like that, but we lived in a big neighborhood and there were tons of kids. And I mean, we would come home from school and we just went out to play. I mean, yeah. until and, dinner and we time at least. We weren't either. really seeing our kids out being able to play as yeah much. culturally it, it has changed a lot so yeah. I, I think we wanted know, to give them that for sure part of part of the reason coming to a farm and part of the reason for all of this and we talked a little bit about it with just the kids education is that we wanted them to be free to just be kids yeah because <laughs> we're in our mid to late 30s and you know I think we would give up a lot to go back and just be free like that to yeah. not have anything and so we want them to experience that while they're at it well and i think if they experience it when they're young they'll learn to value it and it is something that they will seek out to have for themselves um as they get older and become adults i don't think it's something that we fully knew we could have like i think um you know it's like get a house, you get married, get a house, you're, you get a job and you're just like, you're kind of a slave to those things um, until retirement, whenever that comes, you know? And we've uh, done that for a few years and now we're kind of like, yeah, you know, um, seems like we could have some freedom within what we're doing, freedom with our time and. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's a fourth one. Freedom. Yeah. Like, yep. I think we focus a lot on our kids and making sure that they have freedom, but you know, we, we needed the freedom too. I think really a part of my health story of degrading health and ended up getting an autoimmune condition is that I was definitely working too much. Yeah. Um, you could see now afterwards, you can see the signs. I would like eat dinner and then fall asleep while reading the kids a book before bed, you know, just like one page turning to the next and, and gone. And yeah, and that's just not the kind of life that we want to live. We want to be done with work if we have to go to work and and then after that we want to be out doing things and exercising our bodies and and, well, and uh, having eating the energy good food and having people play. over you know yeah <laughs> we yeah. just want to party we that's wanna... what it's all about <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so i guess maybe for i think freedom is probably yeah the fourth one yep um and so the fifth one is i don't think we necessarily consider ourselves really homesteaders so uh, yeah, we, I mean, we bought a there's farm. an element of it, but yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of overlap between homesteading and 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 starting a farm. Uh, but when we decided we wanted to buy this property, we did, we made it intentional that we were going to start a farm and start a business doing yeah. That. And I think you know our goal is to pay the mortgage with farm profits. Yeah. And so you know we're in our second full. We just finished our second you know, full year. This year's the first year where we're really producing things and selling them. You know, we're a long ways off. Um, <laughs> but we have things we bit. have things that are paying for themselves. That's you know, true. The like sheep are we have a small flock of sheep, but um with their excuse me, with the money that we are able to make from their fiber, which isn't even the the top reason why we got sheep. But that's able to pay for their food and the cost of their shearing and the cost to have the um, fleece taken and produced into a usable product. And that is, um, that's a huge thing to have the, our farm be something that 
at the very least sustains itself. It isn't an additional cost to us. It isn't a burden of something that we're um, in a position of like, oh man, we, we, we can't keep doing this because we can't support it and our livelihood. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's something that is supporting itself. And for me, like that's really encouraging because we get to enjoy it and, and um, we have that opportunity to say, well, we can only grow, right? Um, like we, I mean, we could stay where we're at, but we're, you know, we, we've started and we're just small right now. And so if we're able to sustain um, the animals and stuff that we have, if they're able to cover their own costs, then that's a pretty cool deal. Yeah. And I think, I think the broilers, you know, we did two batches of 90 birds and, and, uh, and I'll have some videos coming out because I'm contractually obligated to do it, but I got a grant from the Department of Agriculture to do a research project on broilers because that's just how I'm wired. Um, I'm a sciencey, nerdy guy, and he's highly educated, <laughs> overly educated, overly, educated. <laughs> and uh, um, you know, I think that they you got your debt. <laughs> I got my debt. Um, and you know, I got, I got excited about that and the grant is helping us bootstrap the farm paying yeah. for something so I, I think that they'll probably make money this year and and yeah. the, the run really cool thing about that is that people do not buy things like chicken feed so we have to do something with them and karen has learned how to make bone chicken bone broth that is like amazing like we're not going to sell them next year it's pretty <laughs> we're going to keep them for ourselves <laughs> So, and it's super healthy for you. It's not true that people, some people buy chicken feet. That's true. We have sold not some. Not everybody. But, but now that you're like really on your game, um, uh, it's like, I don't really want to give them up because I had some this morning and I hadn't had some for a while and you've really like stepped it up a notch. I have. Since I've last had I it. Have. It's like, wow, this actually is really, it's really true. good. It's true. It's so, true. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that I think that's one thing that differentiates us from like straight up homesteaders. We're not necessarily trying to just grow our own food yeah. or do, um, you know, some more of the self sustainable things. We're right, we're really, even though that is valuable to us and it is part of the reason. Yeah, it's and, not the whole thing. I think we're I think we're looking a lot more at things in terms of if it will be profitable. So I love the homesteading community because there's tons of experimentation and trying yeah. this. Um, and we did plenty of that and still do plenty of that too. But, you know, we always are going to be looking at it through the lens of if it's something that's going to help the farm. So, well, you know. and I think we'd like to, we'd love to get to a point where someday retirement looks like our, what we're doing on our farm. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we so enjoy what we're doing here that, um, I mean, it is work, it's hard work, but it's so satisfying. Yeah, it's very rewarding work. Yeah. And that's something I didn't mention before. You know, a 401k is a good retirement plan as long as the market's good. Um, and stuffing money on the mattress is a good yeah. plan as long as your house doesn't set on fire, you know. But having a, a farm that we've bootstrapped for 20 years, by the time we're ready to retire, it not only gives us something to do, which I think is super important in retirement, and all four of our parents can be retired as of like a few months from now. We plan yeah. on putting them to work <laughs> here. Um, well, some. Yeah, yeah some. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's good for us, but it also gives us a bit of a legacy that we can give to the kids. Yeah. And we don't have a huge, you know, 400, 500,000 acre farm that some kids want to be in and some kids don't. So we don't have that huge. We're not going to have that huge problem of, of you know, everyone has to sell because nobody can buy each other out. We'll have a property and we'll have a businesses that are portable. Like if one of our kids yeah. wants to take over the chicken business and, and they get a little bit of property, then, you know, that can just become the business. It's not tied to the land like yeah. a huge grain farm yep. would be or a huge, you know, cattle operation or something. Sure, sure. So, um, uh I guess we are into we're, we're I'm I'm interested in a lot of things that other homesteaders in like like uh, rainwater catchment and solar and yeah and, uh, alternative energy and stuff like that. But um, our house you just is, love to learn. Yeah, you like well, I like technology and I like 
I like doing. I, I like gadgets free, and widgets. <laughs> I, I'm, I like free energy. I think is the big thing. Yeah. Um, and so I really want to get into some solar because we have a ton of of uh, sun angle here. We have almost no trees. And we called a solar guy, and he just, like, started drooling almost, like, all I could build you is a $70,000 system, and it would almost cover your your electrical bill. But um, I I think, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that stuff. He was excited. I was excited, too. But, yeah. You know, that our house is kind of falling apart in many respects, so that's not really in the budget. Um, so we're interested in a lot of that, a lot of homesteading stuff, and... And, uh, but like I said, since one of our main goals was to do a farm business, some of that kind of gets put on the back burner until, uh, until we can have, make a little bit more money to, to spend on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and also having a farm business makes mm -hmm. you go out and do things like have to be a marketer and you have to be, uh, a researcher to determine what the, what, you know, it's, you can't just grow chicken. You have to know how to have to know where to get the right feed you have to know some farmers who've done it before who can help you yeah and uh and so that's another thing about the community the farming community is very similar to homesteading as well um and there's a lot of people like us that are just dipping their toe in the water and they have that joel salton talks about it a lot you know his interns used to be 18 and 19 year olds and now it's like 30 32 year old uh, people who are tired of the cubicles yeah um, and so that that i think we probably fall into that a little bit as well as we kind of felt like there should be something more and starting to grow your own food gets really excited um so, Star Wars oh, Star Wars. so we should open this up to <laughs> questions i guess the first one well i mean now being... that we're getting really important <laughs> questions that are totally <laughs> all right so we'll wrap up the five reasons which are yes. for our health for education for us and our family and sharing what we learned. Community. Uh, for community, for freedom, and for, for the ability to... Be entrepreneurs. Be entrepreneurs yeah. ourselves and our kids. Okay, so the question is Star Wars or Star Trek? And the answer is that... Star I, Wars. I, uh, <laughs> I am much more into Star Wars than I am Star Trek now, but... I oh, we're watched have some plenty <laughs> of Star Trek when I was a kid, and I watched all the movies from both. If I had a preference, I would choose the most recent Star Wars movies and the most recent J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies. And he I has will never, never watch... dressed up I, no, for I'm any event. <laughs> I feel like that needs to be. And I'm willing to about. forget Star Wars <laughs> episodes one, two, and three, and Star Trek. That was the one with the humpback whales. Oh, yeah, just, that's too bad. No, it just didn't fit. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, Any other questions on there? Uh, hmm, Jetsons. Jetsons. I don't understand that. No, um, Larky. <clears throat> uh, any other questions anyone else has? Because we wanted this video to be 15 minutes or less, and I think we finished in about twice that. So as long as there's actually still twelve people watching, I was expecting well, yeah, zero. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys want to talk I was about? We're here. Zero people to watch, so. Sarah's, that's her favorite too. Uh huh. Excellent. So, uh, what else do we have coming down the pike soon? Uh, I visited a winter greenhouse on Saturday. Yeah. And we're thinking about building a greenhouse this year. What are the, we have a project. We have to get rid of our chicken coop this year. Hopefully we're not going to do our current chicken coop anymore. So I think we're going to try and build something that's a little pared down, but larger. But then also are a greenhouse the that they can be that was there here in the winter. The or that is here on the property, that was here when we moved here, is not, well, it wasn't originally a chicken coop. So originally it was like a shed for like horse tack because the previous owner had a lot of horses. And, and then he, the previous owner converted it into a chicken coop, but he left all of the insulation and everything in it. So it was like, it was like a gas house for chickens. Basically like our first year here, we were like, this is bad, real bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the chicken coop, we got to we've been, we've cleaned it out. We took out the insulation so that it has, it's able to breathe and 
the chickens can be in there and be healthy. And so that's, that's a good thing, mm -hmm. but it's still, there's lots of room for improvement. We, we built a super nice coop at a previous house. It was like, so nice. It, it was, was cute too, you it guys. It was like eight by four and it cost like $2,500. <laughs> had a video stream live stream <laughs> in it randy and... likes to watch his chickens during the day i mean I you know when work. you gotta go to work and sit <laughs> at a desk the least all the right. world can do for you is let you watch your chickens all right so ethan and sarah want to know how the research is going so okay for you other folks that aren't on there we talked about it a little bit before but i got a grant from the department of minnesota department of agriculture excuse me and uh, it was to compare broiler chickens in different pasture models. So yeah. you're used to uh, what you see Justin Rhodes doing, which is more of a day ranging system. His birds are free to roam within a within a, a electric netting. And then mm -hmm. you are familiar probably with the Joel Salatin, which is they're in the tractor all the time. Um, and so I wrote up a grant to um, research the differences between those two and uh, you know it's it's for it's for farmers, so it has a you know leaning towards you know the time it takes to manage those two different systems, and also uh, you know what the cost difference is to to grow chickens in those two different ways. Um, and then for myself and for our farms marketing yeah. sense, we also got money from the state to do nutritional analysis to see if there's any difference between. Birds that are in the tractor all day versus birds that are allowed to free range to a certain extent. They're not fully free because that would kind of be a death sentence to them. But under the under the term free range, really all of all of those birds are considered free range birds. Like yeah, if you buy true. something at the store that says free range on it, it like all both yeah. of those sets within the research yeah. grant yeah, are yeah. considered free range. I think birds. I think from a from a standards point of view, a bird is free range as long as it has like a concrete porch to peek its head out, but it won't yeah. because, because the food's inside the, the <laughs> big chicken house. So. See daylight. Yeah so, yeah, so the idea is when you're moving a tractor for chickens uh, in the Joel Salatin model, they'll eat grass for the 10 seconds uh, that they're on that grass before you feed them. And then they'll trample it and manure on it and then they don't really peck at it very much. So the idea is if they're given day range, they'll have access to pasture all the time and they'll still feed, but they also will be able to go on pasture. So the, the research is to give the two, the, the, the ones that are in tractor all the time to go their whole lives and they get new pasture every day, but then the ones that are um, doing the day ranging, they get the same amount of pasture over their entire lives. So we wanna see if there's a nutritional difference, if there's a weight difference, um, you know, make sure that they still grow out if there's a feed difference and then how much, you know, difference there is for the farmer in terms of how much time it takes. Cause you have to move that electric netting. Yeah. And so we had to move it once a week. Um, and then, so this year we did that with Cornish cross and we did batches in the spring and the fall. And then next year we'll do it with the red ranger freedom ranger breed. And we'll do another batch in the spring and the fall. Yeah. And, uh, so the results of that, Ethan or Sarah was asking are that uh, in the spring, the Cornish cross, the ones that were in the tractor, they actually grew better and ate less feed. Uh, the ones that were allowed to day range, they did not get as large. Um, and it's not super significant. It was like no. within 5%. Um, um, so I think without, if I was to guess, I would say the reason probably is, is that's the colder time um, and so they expended more energy, the day rangers did, yeah. for uh, the same amount of, uh, per the same amount of feed. And so they, it just took more feed to get them up to weight and they still didn't get there. Uh, the really, and the reason why I think that is a really interesting part is the, the batch that started in August and September, or lived in August and September. Um, uh, confidence interval, there's no confidence interval yet. <laughs> haven't done any of the numbers. Um, <clears throat> so the, the interesting thing about the fall batch is that the day rangers actually did better than the full-time tractor. And the reason why we did two batches is to see if the insects and what the chickens are actually eating more of on pasture, which yeah. is more grass and more, more insects, uh, we believe they got more of their diet <clears throat> 
uh, and we timed it to have them out on pasture when like the grasshopper population was at its highest. I think we missed that a little bit because I timed it based on last year and the grasshoppers yeah. came a little later this year. Yeah, because um, we had all that late snow last spring. Yeah, and, and kind of the secret where a lot of people don't know is that no matter what, broilers are not going to get a huge amount of their diet on out from the grass. The calories that they get actually is from insects and worms and stuff like that that are very high protein sources. Yeah. Uh, so the grass is good, and they get some nutrition from that. They get, you know, uh, the vitamin A and various other things that make their fat profile really, you know, omega-3 versus omega-6. They get that much better because they're on pasture. Um, but when it comes to actually getting them nutrition in terms of calories, it's the, uh, it's the insects that they eat that, gets, that brings that up. Um, so that's, that's what happened. We haven't, I haven't gotten the nutritional analysis, uh, yet. They're at the lab. I sh I'm expecting to get that this week still. Um, I should call them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, but it better happen soon because I have to write my first year <laughs> final report and do at the beginning of next year. Um, so that's how the research went. We're excited to do it again next year with a different breed because Cornish Cross are nice, but they're really kind of... Lazy. Not in, they're not enjoyable. <laughs> animals to raise no. they still have kind of that chickenness to them the meat is great yeah so we'll see we'll really, see what the difference the is, is really with the uh between those and the freedom rangers but yeah. yeah i mean the end product was excellent yeah so that was a that was another benefit is that uh we had to give some meat to the lab for the for the nutritional testing so we couldn't sell the birds that that meat came um, so we got the rest of it ourselves. And, yeah. And we could probably eat 100 chickens a year, no problem. Yeah. Just our family. Easily. So, all right. So that's that's how the research is going. Yeah. Plans for the next year would be a greenhouse and hopefully a greenhouse that that has a little underground thermal mass to it that we can use to keep it warm yeah. in the winter for chickens and maybe even growing a little bit of fodder for them throughout the throughout the winter that'd be super cool because we have a huge horse arena that's just <laughs> sand and it's not doing anything we don't own any horses and um, um, and we won't and we're not going to buy we have horses. the best setup that there ever ever was we have a super nice neighbor who who has horses that he loves and keeps and then he lets our kids come over and ride his horses with his granddaughters that are similar ages so they get all the fun of having horses that are like right here, but we don't have to do anything with them. Yeah, we don't have to buy hay Best. for them. We don't have to shovel after them. If you ever have thought like, oh, you're moving in and then you're like, oh, do I want to live next to horse people? If they're nice horse people, you do. Because <laughs> then you don't have to have horses. All I right. Mean, unless you really want horses. but. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to sign off. Thanks, yep. everyone, for seeing us. We had 14 people. I know. I was so surprised. And they can't all be my mother. So, <laughs> so uh, we got uh, on my here. Aunt Penny. Aunt Penny, I know you watch everything. <laughs> um, so, anyway, thanks for joining us. And yeah. thank you for the challenge, uh, Ethan and Sarah. And, uh, and uh, everyone who showed up, thank you yep. for, for listening to us blabber on for 43 and a half minutes. It's All right, <laughs> how do we shut it off? Hit the X in the top right Oh, yeah. Bye, okay. everyone. See you later. Yes, we want to.